All right, guys. I, apparently, mixing the words vitamin and victims have, have created a world where now I have to check and see if my victim levels are normal. I, it, this is a world to live in. Before we get into the day's topic, I mean, we're going to get into fan art, as obviously, as, as we usually do. But I do want to say what today's topic is, at least the one that we're covering right now. Turns out the quartering is actually sponsored by Nazis. I, that's a That's a weird... That's a weird thing, right? Oh, well, let's get into the fan art section and then we'll get into it. I wanted to talk about the infinite leftism stuff first, but I realize this stuff is uh, probably probably a little more prudent right now, just at this very moment. But first, let's get into the fan art section. This one is from Lore. The people in the fan art are Stoff, Axo, Satoki, Anubian, Makaru, me, and Surus, and Saki. What? Why does everybody here eat drywall? Everybody here is just eating drywall. The next one we have here is from Salem. No context, but it is slime cirrus pixeled on a stool. I remember this getting made, but I don't remember why. I My memory is awful. The last one we have here is from High Priestess Scarlet. Haven't sent art in a while, but threw this together really quickly to reignite my creative side. I couldn't help but bring life to drywall, Coon, and I will do shading another time. Why do you people like drywall? Make it make sense to me! Why does drywall have a calorie count you can Google? Cinder, thank you for redeeming your points. For an... You monster. Ah. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, we're skipping this part because we need to talk about the quartering. I'm kidding. You can go to the Discord and go to the fan art section. Just uh, just don't post anything too terribly spicy. This is this not this is eight, not eighteen plus section, but so the drywall is pink. Is it strawberry flavored? No, it's got pink mold in it. It said define spicy. Uh, did you concoct it with a Carolina Reaper and or a ghost pepper? Then it's probably spicy, just a little bit, but. But fiberglass, I... Stop with the drywall! <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, I recently found out that the quartering was published... Uh, not published, but he was sponsored by a group called Antelope Hill Publishing. Now, I did not know who they were prior to hearing about that, but whenever I hear a sponsor that I don't know about, the first thing I want to do is look them up. Are they a reputable company? Is there some reason to actually care about them? Would they, you know, what type of people do they sponsor? Also, hi, Cooney. Hello. So, then some research was done. Uh, Antelope Hill is an American white nationalist publisher based in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. It is known for selling translations of historical works by Nazis, fascists, and ultra-nationalists, as well as publishing new works by right-wingers, far-right-wingers. It was founded in 2020. The SPLC has called them an anti-Semitic hate group. Translations have included works by Adolf Hitler, the Belgian Nazi war criminal Le uh, Leon de Grel, the Nazi-sympathizing authors Julius Evola and Wilfred Bade, and others. Most of the translations are credited to pseudonyms, including the one credited to an online neo-Nazi message board, according to the SPLC. Holy shit. That's, a. Uh... That's an interesting thing. I wonder why the quartering of all people who's definitely not a Nazi, definitely not one, actually happened to uh, to be sponsored by them. Now, now I need to let you guys know, there's a couple of ways in which people get sponsored, right? There's a few of them. One of them is stream elements. Stream element sponsorships work... Uh, basically like you have a third party it's almost like stream elements is your agent i'll show you what my page looks like so you know what these end up being so for instance this is your stream element sponsorship page like right now i'm sponsored by hellofresh you can do exclamation mark hellofresh that'll give you information on that uh they are currently sponsoring me because of 
my campaigns that are available on stream elements. Now, all of these say, you know, earn up to $3,500, earn up to $1,000, earn up to $2,200. The reality is you don't generally earn that much. You generally earn only a couple hundred. It depends on the size of your audience because it depends on how many people signed up to the thing you're doing. So, for instance, with HelloFresh, it depends on how many people are willing to purchase HelloFresh for themselves during the course of my sponsorship. Now, there's those types of sponsors. Then there's sponsors like, say, DDLG Playground, where I have a working agreement with the company for them, where you can use coupon code SURUS, get 10% off anything there. Those sponsorships are different than the Stream Elements ones. Stream Elements sponsorships are temporary, there's a third party, and there is no cross-communication between you and the other company. Works the same way with another website called MatchMade. Works the same way with a few other websites as well. The ones that are direct to the sponsor, the ones like DDLG Playground or Drink Wraith that I have access to, those ones involved lengthy conversations with the actual sponsors themselves about terms and conditions and the types of things that we wanted out of an arrangement and if our brands ended up lining up. Mine over here on YouTube and Twitch and theirs over on their end since they would be the ones providing money. Now, why do I bring up these differences? Well, because Antelope Publishing does the latter. They are the type of sponsor that reach out to you individually and say, hey, do you want to collaborate? This is what our brand does. This is what we do. This is how we operate. Please, do you want to work with us and make money through us? So... When you are sponsored by someone like them, usually there is some type of agreement on how your brand can be used. For instance, I've been sponsored by, say, Raid Shadow Legends more than once. One time that I got sponsored by them was through the direct method where they sent somebody uh, to talk to me. And I had to agree that if I put up the raid sponsorship, it would be on a non-political video. Uh, and then there was the type where I had the stream element sponsorship where it was, hey, play our game for a couple hours on stream and say something good about the company. The very, very detached kind of sponsorship. Companies like mobile games will do both. It just depends on what their campaign marketers want at the time. Antelope is not integrated with any of those third parties because I don't believe it's actually vetted by any of these third party companies. As a result, they only have the option to reach out to you and see if your brands work out. So let's go ahead and see what the Quarterings uh, brand deal has been up to. Hatewatch has identified three previously anonymous principles in the publishing company Antelope Hill Publishing, which specializes in translating works by Nazis, fascists, and ultra-nationalists, and original works by contemporary white nationalists, neo-fascists, and others on the far right. Hatewatch identified these individuals using a combination of public records, podcast recordings, commercial data services, and a range of other documents and online materials. Hate Watch's research and analysis reveals that Vincent uh, Kukera, I can't remember, I can't pronounce that name, uh, and Sarah Elizabeth Kukera, a married couple residing in Green Lane, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, are two of the individuals behind Antelope Hill. The pair have appeared as pseudonyms, sp uh, pseudonymous spokespersons for the company on numerous far-right podcasts, with Sarah billed under aliases as the company's editor-in-chief since mid-2021. Hate Watch's investigation indicates that a third person, Dmitry Antilovic uh, Lutsik, age 25, has played a less public role in the company's operations. Lutzik appears to have first relocated to Pennsylvania's uh, Lehigh Valley in 2021, and in late April, he bought a house in nearby Harleysville, Pennsylvania, with Vincent uh, Chiara assisting as the buyer's agent. Since 2020, Antelope Hill has profited from hate by translating historical works by 20th century Nazis and fascists, offering a publishing platform to contemporary white power propagandists, and shipping books around the world using selling platforms including Amazon. This year, they achieved wider prominence when one of their authors, the pseudonymous Raw Egg Nationalist, appeared in a preview for an upcoming Tucker Tar Carlson documentary on masculinity, which is set to air on Fox News in June. Which, this means that this is older information because Tucker is no longer part of Fox News. 
I want to break away from the SPLC doc real quick to take a quick look at Antelope Hill Publishing itself so we can see the type of stuff that is here on their website. The Sword of Christ by Giles Corey. Touchgrass Antelope Hill Writing Competition. Then we've got The Man in the Mirror by Mark Time. The Rise of the N uh, NSDAP. Uh, Testament of a Russian Fascist. Michael by Dr. Joseph Goebbels. A Fly in the Hive by Nathaniel Williams. I'm not very, very, very familiar with every one of these works. Though this one caught my eye. The American Regime by an anonymous January 6th prisoner. Gee, I wonder how that book reads. I wonder how that one reads, period. Jesus Christ. Just imagine, A Plot Against Humanity by Scott Howard. The Philosophy of Marx, 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 Marx. So we've got stuff that's just anti-communist, anti-leftism. We've got stuff that talks about how the American regime is a thing because they weren't able to successfully overthrow... America after a democratically elected president was brought onto the stage. So are they based out of a remote jungle villa in Argentina? We've got you Gentiles, Rebel Mountain, in his own words. I feel like these are books, like, if you've read any of these, if you know the context behind any of these in the comment section, please let me know. Because, again... These are not all books that I recognize immediately at a glance. But I did want to take a moment to look at the site itself. The Kukiaros uh, and Lutsiks have a long shared history as far-right activists, stretching back to their time together at Penn State University in the late 2010s. The publishing operation is one aspect of their ongoing participation in the white power movement. Specifically, Hate Watch has found considerable evidence of close cooperation between the Antelope Hill principles and a network of far-right actors associated with the White Supremacists National Justice Party and the Right Stuff Podcast Network. Justice says, I feel like I'll get a virus if I go to that website. Well, then it's a good thing I went to it for you so that I get the virus myself. Right? Said from its founding in 2020, Antelope Hill has won fans on the extreme right by publishing both historical and contemporary far right authors. Early on, the company sold reprints and new translations of work by 20th century Nazis, fascists, and nationalists, with an emphasis on works from Nazi Germany and its sympathizers. Their translations include stuff from Adolf Hitler, Leon de Grill, who's conquering Berlin is a uh, laudatory account of the campaign of political violence carried out by the Nazi parliamentary known as the Brown Shirts in the Weimar Republic era of Germany. Any Antelope Hill authors who are not explicitly far right in their politics have historically been appropriated by contemporary extremists. One of their titles is the collected works of Patrick Pierce, an Irish nationalist intellectual who died fighting against British rule in 1916. Pierce is a contested figure. He has been adopted as a figurehead by the far right in Ireland and beyond, while some scholars have argued that this represents a, mis a misinterpretation of him in this context. Most of the Antelope Hill translations are credited to pseudonyms, according to Library of Congress copyright records. Hate Watch has yet to conclusively identify all of the individuals behind these pseudonyms. One translation of a Nazi era... Uh, Weimark Fitness Manual is credited to the Bureau of Mimetic Warfare, which is a neo-Nazi message board. Jesus fucking Christ. That's what I actually do recognize, the Bureau of Mimetic, uh, Mimetic Warfare. More recently, Antelope Hill has published a series of original books authored by active members of current white power groups and propagandists for far-right movements. These include 2021's Opioids for the Masses, which is billed as a report on the opioid crisis. One of the book's two credited authors, Norman Garrison, is a longtime white nationalist propagandist and podcaster with the The Right Stuff Network. The Library of Congress copyright records lists the name of his co-author, Richard McClure, as a pseudonym. 
said good they translate historic hitler works because have trouble to find some of his writings i feel like there was english there so here's the thing it's it's you have to ask yourself what the motivation of a company is when they're specifically translating works from Nazis and Nazi sympathizers, both old and contemporary. They're not just taking on the historical stuff. They're also taking on the more recent works that are being written that people are using to argue that Nazism actually good in the year 2023. You have to wonder about the motivations of a company like that because it's not like a company whose job it is to remember the past and remember that, hey, these are things that happened. Let's make sure that we never repeat these atrocities. That's not what they're doing here. What they're doing is they're grabbing propaganda from the past and propping it up in the present. Said here in 2021, Antelope Hill published Cultural Grugs, an essay collection credited to a longtime The Right Stuff host, John Barozzi Chapman. In June 2021, the Anonymous Comrades Collective identified Detroit, Michigan uh, resident Jesse, uh, Detroit, Michigan resident Jesse Daniels Ogden as the person behind the Barozzi Boscovic persona, which Ogden has reportedly used as a front for his public production of white nationalist propaganda. Hate Watch reviews ACC's findings and determined that Ogden's name appears twice in the metadata for two images on a blog attributed to Barozzi. Berzoi. Cinnamon Roll says you can also publish analysis of an annotated text that contextualize the original, not just the original hate speech. Yep. It's like the difference between me just taking a video that's being done by Nick Fuentes and just showing it to you with me doing the like the TikTok react thing where I'm just sitting there pointing my hand at it and shaking my head and going. Like, and that's it. It's the difference between me doing that and actually, like, pausing the video to talk about the reason why a person has said a thing and the impact of what that is. Along with these The Right Stuff Connected authors, the Antelope Hills originals include books by a range of contemporary nationalists, neo-fascists, neo-Nazis, and far-right extremists from the United States and beyond. Oh, boy. Antelope Hill launched the Little Frog Hill imprint for contemporary and out-of-print children's books aimed at an, in, uh, inculcating white supremacist ideology into children. Fucking hell. You just want to make those kids hate the Jews, I guess. Like how they're calling themselves Antelope because Springbuck is too recognizable. Said, so why is Germany so much better at getting rid of Nazis than we are? Because they had them there, whereas ours just went into hiding. A man hate watch believes was Vincent uh, Cochiera appearing under the alias described Antelope Hill as a collective effort in an interview on a podcast on the white nationalist The Right Stuff Network on May 16th, 2021, claiming it involved a large group of very dedicated people. In another podcast from April 24 in the same year, uh, the Cucarias again under the pseudonyms referred to Constantin as the esteemed leader of the company. No one involved with the company uses their real names publicly. Indeed, public records in several states show the efforts company founders appear to have made to conceal their identities and maintain the company's operational secrecy. An unidentified individual registered Antelope Hill Publishing on February 18th, 2020 in New Mexico through a registration agent. New Mexico law does not require public disclosure of founders and owners of LLCs. Of course. Imagine publishing material so heinous that you constantly have to keep your identity secret. I understand that there's a, a funny haha -ha here about YouTubers keeping their identity secrets as well. But like, I don't know. I haven't done that with mine. Fluffy B1, thank you very much for reading me your points with an ada ada. You fucking degen. Hate Watch reviewed company records from Louisiana Secretary of State and found that Stephen and Son Book Publishing listed a Baton Rouge, Louisiana address as the principal and mailing addresses for the company. Leaked data from the extremist-friendly web services uh, provider Epic 
shows that the same Baton Rouge address listed for Stephen and Son Book Publishing was also using a website registration transaction between Antelope Hill and Epic. So they have their faces hidden because they're fucking cowards. They know it's bad and they're cowards. Or they just don't want to be attacked. Like, here's the thing. Oftentimes, people will hide their identities because they know they're doing something that can get them attacked. They know they're doing something that can get them attacked. Now, I'm not saying that everybody who hides their face is automatically a coward. Sometimes you do it to protect your own family. In this case, though, this seems to be a case of, hey, we are publishing something that we know is going to be widely unpopular, not because we're right and everybody else is wrong and they just are in denial, but because this is literal debunked Nazi propaganda. Like... It feels like it could be the same with uh, no matter what, depending on what your cultural zeitgeist is. But realistically, this is just the entire public knows Nazis bad. So we have to do our best to make it seem like Nazis good, question mark, but covertly. In the Pennsylvania documents, a person once again using the name John Miller described themselves as Antelope Hill's chief publishing officer. Miller provided an address that matches a Quakertown, Pennsylvania UPS store. UPS's services include private mailboxes. And the Quakerton uh, address is shared by dozens of individuals and companies. Hate Watch has not yet determined whether or not John Miller is a pseudonym, although it is of note that John Miller was a longtime alias Donald Trump used to impersonate his own fictual, fictional publicist in interactions with the news media. In a telephone conversation, a representative of the Pennsylvania Department of State told Hate Watch that the state did not require photo identification to register a foreign association. Weird. Is weird set of coincidences there. The use of John Miller again. It's also very weird that people who do Nazi shit keep on being associated with Trump. Said, in addition to public records that provide useful information, Hate Watch consulted commercial data providers and other sources of information that pointed to Lutzik and Kukarius as leaders within Antelope Hill. Commercial credit reporting data on Antelope Hill records a real street address and a telephone number for the company. According to multiple telephone data services, the number is registered to Dmitry Lutzik on the Verizon network. Multiple data services associated the phone number with both a Hotmail address using his first name and surname and a Penn State assigned student email address using his initials and a sequence of numbers. I'm less worried about the property information. I want to see more information on what they actually do. So did someone put... East Greenville property owned by Montgomery County Properties LLC back on the market in 25th of April. Vincent Cucchiera acted as the sales agent according to advertisements on multiple real estate sales websites. ACC, the anti-fascist research collective, provided online evidence to Hate Watch indicating that Vincent is currently working as a realtor. ACC's findings are reflected in online materials from EXP Reality based on the uh, based in the township of Limerick in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, that identify Cucchiera as an employee. Pennsylvania state records indicate that Cucchiera registered as realtor is registered as a realtor in February of 2022. Hatewatch called and emailed Kukiera's employer to request comment, but received no immediate response. In his work as a real estate agent, Vincent Kukiera sold properties in East Greenville and other parts of Leili Valley. The property listing makes no reference to Antelope Hill, but photographs of the East Greenville property posted with the advertisements offer a window into a full-fledged publishing and fulfillment operation that appears to have been operating on the property. Moreover, the photographs suggest that the operation depicted was Antelope Hills. Hate Watch identified what appears to be multiple Antelope Hill titles in photographs of the home office and the hallway, including copies of Garrison and Mickler's opioids for the masses. Canadian fascist and anti-Semite Andrew Arkin's Servium, and a compilation of translated Adolf Hitler speeches entitled In His Own Words. Antelope Hill representatives made comments in a podcast interview on the Right Stuff Network on May that aligned with this evidence of a home-based, large-scale shipping and receiving operation. 
At the time, a guest named Paul, whose voice sounds identical to that of Kukiera's in recordings, was made under his own name, told the host about one of the strategies they used to lessen the impact of Amazon and other sellers deplatforming them. He said, we do fulfill. We don't do ship or fulfillment on demand. We buy our books from book printers and fulfill them ourselves. We made that decision. We are, I believe, the only publisher on the right and probably one of the few publishers that actually does that. Ship on demand and fulfillment on demand publishers are generally online sellers who offload responsibility for printing, fulfilling, and shipping into third parties. Kukiara's claim about Antelope Hill's model in contrast, which requires significant space for storing and shipping books. So instead of having a third party that owns a warehouse, they're like shoving all the books into their own house and shipping them out from there. It would require a pretty big house. Hate Watch knocked at the door of Green Lane of the Green Lane address on after, uh, on the afternoon of Friday, June 10th, finding it on a quiet residential block flanked by two neighboring houses promoting LGBTQ equality and racial justice causes with lawn signs. A young man with a pale complexion, light brown hair, and a goatee answered. He said the Kukarias were not home, and after Hate Watch explained the nature of the inquiry, shut the door. Hate Watch looped around the property by car and found two cars parked on the premises. One of the cars had a sticker associated with Blue Lives Matter, a counter movement to the racial justice Black Lives Matter movement, and another sticker advertising a white nationalist YouTube channel. Hate Watch encountered the young man again, now wearing camouflage patterned bucket hat. He expressed a familiarity with the Southern Property Law Center's work. Almost seems like a house easy enough to find by draw. I mean, Google. I mean, looking. <laughs> he said, I know who you are. I know who both of you guys are, he said to the Hate Watch reporters. We'll see each other again one day. On the same day, Hate Watch drove to the property in Harleysville and found it empty, dilapidated and possibly in the nascent stages of renovation. Based upon some tools and equipment visible through the windows and at the front and side of the house, someone left behind a broken toilet, two broken newspaper delivery boxes, a crushed can of Four loco hard seltzer, two empty cups, and a Wawa coffee, and a half-filled bottle of Mountain Berry-flavored Powerade on the grassy overgrown grounds outside the house. So basically a usual construction zone. That's what I expect from most construction zones. Hate Watch visited the East Greenville property, the apparent site of the publishing operation, and found it shaded by trees and partially under construction. Hate Watch made out what looked like a trailer home parked at the rear of the property. When Hate Watch rang the doorbell, a heavyset bearded white man and his dog answered the door. He didn't give his name, but told Hate Watch reporters that Vince is my landlord, referring to Vincent Kukaria. Hate Watch observed a pile of boxes through one of the windows, as well as two vehicles parked on the driveway. The placement of the boxes and the cars appear to match images that Hate Watch obtained from a now deleted real estate advertisement for the property. Hate Watch left business cards with them. They followed the in-person visits to the three properties with repeated requests for comment from Vincent Cucchiera, Sarah Cucchiera, and Dimitri Lutz, uh, Lutzik. Hate Watch tried available and publicly listed phone numbers and private employer provided email addresses and two publicly available email addresses for Antelope Hill. Jesus Christ. They've done a lot of work here trying to make sure that they have as much information as possible. Shared history of far-right agitation. All three individuals identified have a shared history of far-right agitation that stretches back to their time as students at Penn State. They reviewed their commencement records and determined that Vincent graduated with a degree in chemical engineering. The same documents indicated that Sarah graduated in 2018, and Pennsylvania state records indicated she's still registered as a school teacher in the state. Dimitri also graduated in 2018 from Penn State's College of Business before earning a master's degree in business administration from the University of Miami in 2020. Sarah being a teacher is scary. Being a... So, being a teacher, being in control of shaping students' minds is a terrifying thing for someone to be if they're a Nazi. And I just make no mistake, if somebody's working with or for this organization, they're just a Nazi. Like, when it came to the Nazi party, we have a term. 
We had a term for people who don't agree with their movement, don't agree with what they do, but nonetheless accept their money and work for them because it's the thing that provides fo uh, food for their table. The word for them was Nazi. They had far-right activity after college. Labeled themselves as Tradcaths. Of course they did. And then, of course, we already saw they ran the White Nationalist podcast circuit. They talked about that before. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And then, of course, these are the three people in question. I know who you are, said this man who interacted with Hate Watch on June 10th. Ah, yes. The the perfect specimen of human genetics. The Nazis would be proud. Where's your blonde hair and blue eyes, bro? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, if you were wondering where you could uh, find publishings by Goebel and Hitler, and you were needing to find them, I guess this is your, your way of doing it. This is your way of doing it. And of course, the quartering doesn't receive that much pushback from his own audience for the sponsorship. A bunch of people end up just supporting him for it, supporting him through it. Because why would they? Like, 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 people who like the quartering are familiar with his shtick. Familiar enough to where they will either make excuses because, oh, he's just being the, the edgelord that he is. Or they'll argue that, uh, no, this isn't actually Nazi stuff. It's just controversial documents. Or they just are Nazis and they're okay with these publications. It's one of the three. It's one of the three. So apparently we have now The Quartering signed up with a white nationalist book company. I'd, I'd say it's far out there, but for him, not really. Not really at all. So say if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Yep, 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 yep. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Antelope Hill Publishing. Antelope Hill Publishing is America's leading publisher of dissident books. Their collected catalog includes Lord Miles' memoir of his first trip to Afghanistan during the Taliban takeover, Raw Egg Nationalist Book, Eggs Benedict Option, his Raw Egg Cookbook, and his Man's World Annual Magazines, and an anonymous J6 Prisoner's Political Analysis of the government that betrayed him entitled The American Regime. They've also published historical books from time periods such as World War II, Spanish Civil War, many of which were previously unavailable in English, such as Leon de Grail's The Burning Souls. The goal of Antelope Hill is to ensure that books of historic, cultural, and political value are preserved, made readily accessible and easily affordable so that history, facts, and ideas cannot be censored by corporations or governments. Whether you count yourself a political dissident, a student of history, a connoisseur of philosophy, or an enthusiast of exciting and thought-provoking fiction, you owe it to yourself to check out their catalog at antelopehillpublishing.com and God, it sounds so innocuous. It sounds so innocuous, but it's it's just fucking gross. It's a white nationalist publisher that focuses primarily on stuff made by Nazis and almost exclusively on stuff made by Nazis. So it doesn't sound very innocuous. No, so it sounds innocuous to normal people. To normal people, it sounds innocuous. People who view my channel are not normal people. I'm not a normal people. People who are like super plugged in to political discourse. That's not the norm. That's the norm in our groups, our echo chambers. That's not the same thing as if I if I played that advertisement. If I played that advertisement to a rando on the street, they would find it innocuous. And that's all it has to be. It just has to be innocuous to them. 
it we can see through that shit because we're super hyper plugged in to politics online. But most people will not see through that shit. Most people won't. Most people will see that and just go, oh, it's just a it's just a collection of historical pieces, Gavna. That's what that's what most people will do. Most people are just gonna be like, ah yeah, no, that's normal. It's 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 not though. It's not. It's Nazi shit. It's Nazi shit being published in 2023 so that people have access to the old Nazi shit so they can publish the Nazi shit and pretend it's not shit. That's what this is. Jesus Christ. Antelope Hill, everybody. Now, if you're familiar with any of the works that were there and can give me some context for them in the comment section below, please do so. Please do so. But with that said, we're going to move on to talking about some other stuff. I am going to run to the restroom. And while I do that, you should subscribe. Also, insert a video tagline here.